Yo, top billing to ya. I top billing. It's been a long time coming. I told people that I would eventually get around to watching my man C.J. Henderson, my favorite corner of the 2020 class. I uh, saw him way back since high school at camps. Chris Henderson Jr. is the absolute truth as far as his physical makeup. One of the better athletes that you'll see playing the cornerback position, which is a position that usually has great athletes. So he's that great of an athlete there. Uh, Chris Henderson last year kind of struggled to me, right? He struggled in certain aspects of his game. It was a pivotal year for him. He came in as the number one corner, the consensus number one corner, and he was still drafted as such, right, a top 10 pick. But let's be real here. In my opinion, he should have been the guy that went to the Lions if, if, it, he was going, if there was going to be a cornerback selected with the first pick. To me, it had to have been him, right? So he was dealing with some injuries. And also, you're dealing with injuries, but you're playing in a murderer's row conference with the receivers, right? Just a little bit different from your man Jeffrey Okuda, who I love a lot as well. And um, But the difference and the discrepancy in talent faced, individual talent faced, Remember, I had the thing, right, going back on Jeffrey Okuda, talking about the lack of superior talent or the lack of elite talent that he saw as a starter in his one year. If you match that with what C.J. Henderson saw throughout his three years in, in, in at Florida, not even comparable, not even close. I mean, your man Henderson saw the best of the best, and um, he, for the most part, lived up to that billing, so... I think Chris Henderson is going to be a superstar. He's showing himself at camp. Maybe got off to a little bit of a slow start, but he's picked it up. And some of these one-on-one -on -one reps that this man has been doing is absolutely phenomenal. A lot of talent at Jacksonville from the receiver position, right? So I always look about it, and I think about this, like when I was thinking about Noah Igbenogany, A.J. Terrell, and these guys. A.J. Terrell by far has the, out of all the first-round corners, he has the toughest um, individual competition on his team with Julio Jones, and then you add in a guy like Calvin Ridley, right? Even um, your man Jeffrey Okuda, you go from facing guys who are fifth and sixth round pick undrafted free agents to facing a Kenny Galladay or Marvin Jones. Those are some very good NFL receivers, but Jacksonville has the best athletes at receiver. Uh, you talk about going against a Chris Conley. These are guys who ran four threes. Chris Conley is a four three cat at the combine. DJ Chark is a four three cat at the combine. I'm not talking about these damn pro day times. They ran the legit four three at the combine. Chark a six foot four guy running the damn four three. Conley a six foot three guy running the damn four three. You got your work cut out for you there, right? But in addition to that, having guys like Lavisca Chenault, Colin Johnson. Uh, the cold kid there. They have some some really good receivers as far as guys you want to see from different ranges. Short, short, tall, route runner types, possession types, everything. So he's getting a good feel for the NFL and training camp. So you can always welcome that. But we already know what C.J. Henderson is about if you paid attention to this man the past few years. Uh, well, it's just one of those things, man. Sometimes, right, you can be on the scene a little bit too long. That's what I always say. These guys like a Jamar Chase – leaving to go to the draft with just one year of production. He doesn't have to come back this year and this time have perhaps faulty QB play or perhaps the play calling is a little bit different or something like that, offensive line or whatever like that that could hurt his numbers. He gets to go in off of his best off his best work, not having to come back for another season. So that's what I'm saying. So a guy like Jeffrey Okuda, he got one year of great publicity. He wasn't – I never heard too many people put him in the first round prior to the season. But after the season, he got to be on a little bit of a showcase in the playoffs and everything. He ended up getting that first slot taken. But that should have been C.J. Henderson's spot, and I think he'll live up to the billing regardless, though. But, man, let's get into some of these one-on-one -on -one reps, right? Let's go. What more can I say? Top billing. Top billing. Top billing. All right, y'all, here we go right here. We can see him going against Chris Conley. Backside ISO here. I think Conley is running. Well, let's, let's just run all the way through here. All right, so it's just a fade. Uh, one more time, full speed, then we'll dissect it here. Oh, let's go, let's go. Uh, that's a good rep. That's a really good rep, and that's with the flaws in the rep here. So one thing that I noticed, right, 
Uh, working in Todd Walsh's defense at Jacksonville, which has a lot of fucking young stars in it, man. Josh Allen is going to be amazing, man. They have some really talented. It's like a, a, a nice baseball team there. One of them young baseball teams that you can see here in a couple of years really start to take shape. But um, look at this right here. So C.J. Henderson, they didn't press as much as you think they pressed at Florida on the tie grant. A lot of vet, uh, vertical bells. Uh, they work with and everything. So I can tell that his press technique needs, needs a little bit of work from some of the reps that I saw here. He usually tries to work with two hand jams and you don't want to you don't want to work with two hand jams, right? You don't want to do this. Look at this. Right off the thing, right? He stays square, he stays parallel to the line of scrimmage, but why not just be patient? Let Chris Conley declare, and then you shoot. Right? He shoots prematurely, right? You don't want to be shooting prematurely, right? This is what I call premature evaluation right he's evaluating his route here and he's shooting prematurely you let it take shape you let him declare what, you, what he wants to do and then you get to your business right here right so he shoots a two-hand jam you see chris chris conley right he's going towards the boundary he's going towards the boundary so what you want to do is right you're going to sit there and be patient and then you're going to shoot your jam and then you're going to turn and let that ride and get you into position those then you stay into his hip pocket right if you shoot a two-hand jam, you're going to put yourself um, at a disadvantageous spot because more than likely he's going to get by a two-hand jam and you can't really correct yourself from that. So you see here, shoots that two-hand jam. Luckily enough, he's decently strong there. But look at the spacing created. It's a lot of spacing created. This could have been a stop route, right, a stop route, and, and there's way too much space for that. He probably wouldn't be able to. Uh, combat that there, but luckily it's continuing to go downfield here, and we see it. Great work there, getting inside him right, but once again, not turning. He's in phase. Why not turn and locate the ball? Just turn inside him, like I said before. If you use that hand, turn inside of him, then you'd be there to locate the ball as well. So, but he face guards this and um, ends up breaking up the pass. So. The end result was pretty good. Maybe the throw could have been a little bit better, but man, it is what it is on that front. All right, y'all, check this one out right here. This is a really good rep, right, F almost from meets the eye. But we're going to go back and dissect this, then you'll see what I mean right here. So he's going against Colin Johnson. Remember him, Granddaddy Colin, I called him last year. Uh, when we, I had to cover him with for the LSU content. That man was running around on the good foot and shit like that. He, like, he had zero athleticism and zero speed, but uh, he was injured, though. But he's not the fastest of receivers. But check this out right here. Stop and go. No bueno. Look at C.J. Henderson's speed. Uh, underthrown pass. Colin Johnson doesn't turn back and adjust to the ball. Look at that. Right up in his hip pocket. But what don't you see, right? Really good play right there, but is it? But is it? Obviously, it's to me, the eye, you're going to look at this route and be like, damn, this rep, you'd be like, shit, see, the Henderson killed it. But check this out right here. All right, check it out from this particular angle right here, and you'll see what I'm talking about. We'll let it go full speed. Stop and go. Right in his hip pocket, literally. Look at that. You see him grabbing, the, grabbing his shirt there? So, obviously, you couldn't do that in a real game and it not be called. So he actually, he funneled, like he he smothered his own work, right? That's what you call smothering your own work. He did really good in this particular rep because he could have stayed in his hip pocket. He's infinitely faster than Colin Johnson. So him doing this is really unnecessary there. So this actually helps him gain position, propels him forward to catch this pass. And it also messes with Colin Johnson's momentum. But what is Colin Johnson doing? Why not turn and locate and try to fight back to the ball to help your quarterback? That's some lazy shit right there from Granddaddy, Granddaddy Colin. But all right, so let's see this from the from the initial phase here. No, no is no press on this one, right? So he gets a free release, right? He's working with a cold approach, turns, stays right there. Doesn't go for this the the stutter part of this, right? Doesn't go for the stutter portion of this, but stays in his hip pocket, but then cheats. So. I don't know. He didn't need that. That was going to be a good rep anyway. He's faster than Colin Johnson. He shouldn't smother his own work. Got to trust your own footwork, trust your own technique, trust your own eyes, and then go from there. But sends that, sends the hold and whatever like that, that was a good rep. 
All right, y'all, this time he's going against fellow rookie LaVisca Chanel. Now, LaVisca Chanel is a guy that I absolutely love. I think he's one of the most underrated players in the entire country. He was like a one-man band in Colorado. You would have took LaVisca Chanel and put him on, like, Georgia or something last year, a team that was an elite-level team that didn't have good wide receiver play or not enough elite wide receiver play. You may have seen some different shit. He's, he's that good to me, but I heard these guys have been battling in camp. Check this stop rod out. Uh, look at that. Ran the route for him. Ran the route for him. You know what ran the route for him? His footwork and his patience ran the route for him. Right? He became LaVisca Chanel here. So, can't really tell what the approach is here. Um, I, won't, I, can't, I can't see it. So, I don't want to speculate. It looks like it could be a two-hand. I'm looking at it right there. It looked like it was a two-hand approach there. So, you know I don't like that, but. LaVisca Chanel right here, when you're doing this type of route right here, it's a quick stop route on, you got to be strong, be able to kind of get that separation. CJ Henderson stronger than people think. Right there with right there with LaVisca, runs the route for him. He works back to the ball. They both work back to the ball. Henderson right up on it. Maybe the throw was a little late. I don't know. I think it was, I think it was just good work all the way around. I don't think there's much you could do with this. It's too short of a route. Was not going to do it. He was just too patient. I love it. All right, more work going against LaVisca Chanel here. Now, look, this is not a good rep. Check this out. Oh, what did I tell you about that two-hand jam? That's why you don't want a two-hand jam. The pass right here is a bad pass, but he was clearly beaten on this one. Look at this. Ooh, shooting a two-hand jam does not allow you to use your footwork. You're not going to work with two hands and footwork at the same time going to be one hand and then use your footwork so see right here in this approach even this i can't totally see but it looks like he has too narrow of, of a base width he maybe corrects that when the route is underway there yeah, you can see him start to spread a little bit there but look now shaniska is a, a pretty big dude big strong dude shaniska <laughs> laviska Shaniska, <laughs> LaVisca Chanel is a really big dude here, pause, and you can see him, right? You're trying to shoot a two-hand jam on him. If he breaks through that, you're at a disadvantageous spot, like I said before. He breaks through that. Now the spacing is going to be all off. Look at this. Now he has to try to trail, and just hopefully this route is vertical going downfield, but it's an in-breaking route. In-breaking route. Leaves him in the dust. Look at the social distancing practice right here. Great social distancing by your man LaVisca Chenault, but terrible throw here. Speaking of terrible throw, man. No, nah, I don't know. I like Gardner Minshew. Right? I, I think he's cool. But, man, could you imagine if Trevor Lawrence were a Jacksonville Jaguar this time next year? Even Justin Fields. That shit won't be hard. You talk about having a whole bunch of young superstars like these guys have on the team. Trevor Lawrence throwing to DJ Chark. Woo. Trevor Lawrence throwing to LaVisca Chenault. Let's go. What more can I say? Top billing. Top billing.